Welcome to my shop. My name's Dale. Dividing heads are excellent, um, but what if you don't own one? Another great alternative is to go in with an indexing head, but an indexing head has its limitations too, and basically it's on the size of diameter that you can chuck in a C5 collet. So that's what I want to talk to you about today, is how to divide something up into different quadrants without using any of those tools. The discussion today is how to divide something up without a dividing head. Now, the reason I'm not using a dividing head is, well, the main reason is the three-jaw chuck that I have for it will not grit the material strong enough to use a cutter on it the way that I want to use it. The reason I can't use the indexing head is, well, it won't handle the diameter of the material that I need to work with. So our alternative is using a milling machine vise, and this is an excellent way to do it. Now, a spur chuck, which we're going to make today, has four different quadrants, and we're going to divide this out. Now, a spur chuck is designed to hold a piece of wood in place for woodworking on the, on the wood lathe. On a spur chuck like this, it's got to be divided up equally into four parts. And the challenge is we have to hold it really strong because of the way that I'm going to use this cutter in it. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a very simple system here. And the accuracy of this system is really up to you and how much time you want to spend on it. I need to get a fourth quadrant out of this. Luckily, we're just dealing with 90 degrees. We're going to take our part, spin it, bring it around, and we're going to use this block here. This is actually a jaw, an extra jaw off of this vise, and a square, and just bring it in here and line it up. Now, again, the accuracy of that is dependent on you and how much work you want to put into it. If you also wanted to, we can take an angle block like this, and we could line this up, oh, I don't know, maybe we would find a way to set it up this way and bring it in. That's going to be up to you, because remember, as machinists, we're different than a machine operator. A machine operator just does what he's told. Us as machinists solve problems, and this is an excellent problem that we need to solve and work on. So let's uh, realign this, get it set up. Now on the back here, actually I need to set this up too, is I need a stop. So let me bring my stop in here. Okay, so now when I'm working on my material, I've got a place that's already set up for how far it needs to be cut in. So we're going to come back down here, make sure our surfaces are clean, and well, let's line this up here. Lock it into place. Now you can see how important it is to hold this 
um, so stiffly. Putting a cutter in like this puts a lot of stress on it. Now, just um, a piece of advice. I have different quality of cutters that I have. I have my brand new ones like this one that I call my A cutters and I have my B's which I use for a lot of stuff and then I have my C's which need to be sharpened and should never be used. And in this situation, because I know the stress that's going to go on this, that I used one of my A cutters and I thought that was very important. You could see how much easier the cut was with a great cutter. So I'm going to finish this up and uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, remember, subscribe to my channel. Until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.